Look at verse 18. We'll start reading right there. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed within, with corruptible things, such as silver, gold, from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. We'll stop right there. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come to the throne of grace tonight, Lord, we are thankful knowing that, God, that you do answer prayers. And, Father, even before we know the need, God, I believe you're already working on supplying the need. And, Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord, that knowing that you hear us. And, Father, we ask you tonight to touch everyone that's here. We know, Lord, that there's some that homesick or whatever. We lift them up before you and pray for them as well, Father. But, God, Lord, just let your spirit have his way tonight. Give us ears to hear and a mind to, to understand and a heart to receive what you have for us. And, Father, we pray that, God, Lord, you anoint this vessel of clay tonight. In Jesus' name we pray in the church said amen. 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 You may be seated tonight. Amen. Let me amen. get a quick drink here. I want to look at a thought in the latter part of that 21st verse that your faith and hope might be in God. Amen. We need hope, don't we? Amen. We need hope. Peter has been referred to by some people as the apostle of hope mm -hmm. because he writes so much in his two writings on the subject about hope. Peter in these verses implies that there is a great need for faith and hope. When you stop to analyze the scriptures and begin to look at them in a more deeper uh, sensation, if you will, because I think sometimes, and I do it, uh, is that sometimes we read over them and we get blessed by them, but I think sometimes that God's people need to slow down in their reading. Amen. And I'm not saying slow down in the point where you're not reading, but I am saying slow down into the point that you see what you're reading. Because the Word of God is full of hope. Amen. I said the word of God is full of hope Amen. that we can build our dreams and our lives upon. Amen. Peter was known, as I said, as the one of apostle of hope. And he sees here that, uh, that your faith and hope might be in God. You know, you can have a lot of faith, but faith must have an object and a hope, a ground, and an aim. Can I say this evening where you put your faith and hope will make a difference in your life. Amen. And I say that very simple, but I can tell you where your faith and your hope lies, where you put it at, will make a big difference in your life. We need to know, you know, we need to have faith and hope in one another. We need to care about each other and love one another. Amen. But my hope and my faith rest upon God. My hope and my faith and my trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ that no matter what I face, he's going to get me through it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We basically know that we live in a non-Christian society, one that is filled with pressures and temptations and that is constantly trying to conform us to its image. Amen. Amen. The world wants you to be like it. It's sad to say, but there any more that the world is getting too churchy and the church is getting too worldly. Yeah. Amen. Christians don't care anymore. I mean, they just live any old way they want to live. At least they call themselves Christians. But church, I believe that we are a people that has been called out from the ways of the world. Amen. We find it very difficult if we say that we love the Lord and we've got our trust in Him. Amen. And then we just live any old way we want to do. Amen. You know why a lot of people live defeated and still come to church? 
I can tell you why a lot of it is, is because they're living too much like the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Instead of giving in to the world's values and to the world's lifestyles, we should be a holy people and let us stand out from the crowd. I'm not talking about in an arrogant way, but church, I believe God's looking for somebody that will let, us, let their light shine in a dark and a dreary place. Amen. Peter also wrote in 1 Peter 3 and 15, he said, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. Yeah. Let's make God, let's make the God of our hearts big enough that we don't have to fear what man and what the world can do to us. Yeah. How big is your God? Amen. How big is the God you serve? Is he just big enough to get us here on church on Sundays and maybe Wednesday nights? Amen. But I can tell you one thing. God wants to be a big God in our lives on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays as well as Wednesday and Sunday. I'm here to tell you that God wants to be big enough in our lives uh, that we can put our hope, our trust, and our faith in uh, and during the times of struggles. Amen. Nothing is impossible to him that believeth. Amen. Do you hear me tonight? I said nothing shall be impossible unto that one that will have their object of Jesus Christ and build their hopes and their lives upon him. Amen. 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 That your faith and hope might be in God. I want you to put a little bit of faith and hope in me as your associate pastor. Amen. That what I'm telling you and that you can uh, trust me for certain things. But folks, let me tell you, I don't want to be the one that you build your salvation on. Amen. Amen. We need to have confidence in one another. But you know what? You may try to call me one day and I won't be able to pick up the phone. Right. Amen. You may be trying to come by my house and I may not be home. But do you know tonight uh, that you can call upon God? Uh, hallelujah. You can call upon the object uh, of your faith and of your hope uh, and his name being Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you where your hope is uh, and where your faith is will make a difference in your life. Amen. Put faith in your church. Put faith in your pastor. Put faith in your uh, Sunday school teacher. Put faith in your spouse. Put faith in your children. Put faith in your parents if you still have them. But my point is uh, that when it comes to your salvation, when it comes to your victory in the, from this world, you must have your hope and your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's serve Him with reverence and godly fear. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 8 and 13 says, Sanctify the Lord of hosts themselves, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Amen. As I read there just a few minutes ago in 1 Peter 3 and 15, he said, To give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Christians ought to be able to give an account of their hope when asked, what does it mean when we talk about, and the Bible talks about, to sanctify the Lord in our hearts? It is when we serve Him in sincerity. When our thoughts of Him is great and mighty. When we totally rely upon His power and trust in His faithfulness and submit to all His all-knowing wisdom. That's part of how we sanctify the God in our lives. Amen. Amen. In our hearts. When our hearts are filled with these principles along with the presence of God, then this will make us not ashamed of our faith and hope in God. Amen. Where does your hope lie today? In your job? I hope not. I thank God for my job most days. Amen. Every once in a while, I dread. I don't dread it because I just get up and pop right out of bed real quick. But I dread driving that all the way to Lexington. Amen. Babylon. Amen. Amen. Driving all the way to Babylon. 
But you know what? I'm thankful for what I've got. Amen. It could be a lot worse. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, I don't have to be ashamed of the faith. Amen. I don't have to be ashamed of the hope that I have in God. Why? Is because I can look at somebody and they say, why do you believe what you believe? I know, as Paul said, in whom I have believed. And I'm able that he is able to keep that, that I have given unto him and that I've committed into his hands. Church, what is our faith and our hope? Whose object or what is the object of our faith and hope? It must be Christ Jesus. And you're going to hear me repeat this uh, sometime because I want to drive this point home. Amen. My hope and my faith ain't in Frankfurt. And I don't say that in a mean, hateful way, but my hope and my faith ain't in Frankfurt. It ain't in uh, Louisville. It ain't in Washington, D.C. My faith and my hope is in a God that I've never seen before. Oh, I've had visions of him. Amen. I've had dreams of him and everything, but I'm here to tell you that I've never laid eyes upon him like I've known, like I've seen you. But I can tell you this, as sure as I stand here tonight and preach that he's a real God, he's a real God sitting on a throne, he still has all power, and my hope and my faith is in him. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of him. I'm not ashamed of him. I think I told this story. Don't know if there's anything spiritual to it. But back a few months ago, I had come in from my route and was finishing up and unloading my truck, the mail. And this uh, gentleman came to me. And I'd seen him maybe once or twice before. Haven't seen him since that night. But I, he walked up to me and just an unexpected little thing. He said, I want to ask you something. I don't like that when people come to me like that. Because it gets me nervous. What have I done? Don't know him. I've never met him other than just seen him off at a distance. Amen. He's always smiling. Amen. I thought, what have I done? I want to ask you something, he said. He said, what are you most thankful for? Right out of the blue. And I thought for a minute, and I said, you know what I'm most thankful for? He said, what? I said, I'm thankful every day that I've got a God that I can wake up to and that I can serve and I can give glory to him. And he drawled back and looked at me and just smiled. He said, that's all right. That's what he said. That's all right. And went on about his business. Ain't seen him since. Amen. I mean, nowhere on the, in, in the. I don't know if he quit or if he was an angel. I don't know what it was. It wasn't them experience. I don't know what it was. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not ashamed of the God that saved me almost 40 years ago and delivered me. Amen. And he's the object of my faith and my hope. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of him. Some people are ashamed of him on Mondays because they don't want to live like a good Christian ought to live. Well, Amen. You're a well, that went over real well. <laughs> Amen. Let's move on. Verses 18 down through 20 of our text. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Christ, of the Lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world and was manifest in these last times for you. We were not redeemed by corruptible things. When he's talking about silver and gold and other things of the world, the salvation that you and I have tonight was not purchased by money. Amen. It wasn't purchased by things. You didn't earn it. None of us deserved salvation. Amen. I've met a few people that thought they deserved it and God ought to be thankful that he saved them and they served him. But I didn't deserve it. But I'm thankful 
And almost 40 years ago, God came down and touched me. But he didn't save me, amen, with something corruptible. But he saved me and he saved you with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. They put a thorns upon his head and hooked him to a hitching post and beat him, amen, till the Bible says that you could see the flesh ripped off of him, amen, and maybe probably even see the bones in his back and things and beat him almost to death, and that wasn't good enough. They took him to a place called Calvary, amen, but on the way they put a cross upon him that he carried his own cross to Calvary. Let me tell you, maybe you never was a bad person, and I wasn't the worst, but I can hear it tell you uh, that Christ uh, he didn't buy us uh, with a, with a, 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 in, with corruptible things uh, but he bought us uh, with his precious blood and he's the object tonight uh, of my hope and of my faith Man. Man, right. in our struggles we need to think about that because none of us will ever suffer like he did and I don't mean to make light of anything that anybody ever faces that's not it I realize there's lonely times sometimes. I realize children can put you through things sometimes. I realize that siblings and stuff can do this and do that. And you can have job problems and financial problems. Amen. You can have discouraging things and problems that all, that all comes upon everybody. But when I think about that, when I get going through those things, I begin to think about Christ and what he done for me. He didn't have to, but thank God he did. Oh, hallelujah. I said he didn't have to. He didn't have to save me, but he did. Amen. He didn't have to fill me with the presence of his Holy Spirit, but he did. He didn't have to put joy in me, but he did. He didn't have to put love in me, but he did. He didn't have to put compassion in me, but he did. He didn't have to put joy unspeakable and full of glory in me, but thank God he did. Do you hear me? Who is and what is the object of your faith? and your hope let it be Christ especially in difficult times hallelujah now let's look at verse 21 if you have your Bibles still open who by him who believe in God raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God hallelujah all through the scriptures, and I know you've heard me say this in times past, God wants to show himself to you and me. He wants us to, to, to look at him not just as an object. I don't mean that in a bad way, but as an object of love and of mercy and of compassion. Amen. Christ makes himself known to all who will seek to know who he is. It is hard to put a lot of faith in someone whom you know little about. If I don't know somebody, I may have heard good things about them. I may have seen good things in them. But if I don't know that person very well, it's hard for me to put faith in them a whole lot. And I don't mean that in the disparaging. I just don't know them. Amen. I just don't know them. I'd say that's the way y'all felt about me and Jackie. When you when we come over here to to to, to work as your associate pastors, who's these folks? What, the what has Brother Larry brought into us? But she's okay. Amen. She's all right. I've known her for several years. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. But I imagine that's probably what you all thought of what the Brother Larry brought in here to preach to these for, to us. Amen. Hopefully I've learned a little bit, I've earned a little bit of respect in things. But my point is, I've learned for almost 40 years of serving God, amen, that I can count on him. Yeah. Amen. Do you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you missed a good one right there. Yeah. I said I've learned. When I first got in this way, amen, boy, I struggled just to try to keep my head above water, if you will. I struggled, amen, going through things. But do you know, as I begin to hang in there a little longer, I failed along the way, amen. I made mistakes along the way, but I tried to hang in there. I said, Lord, just keep me. Keep me, Lord. Hold on 
to me. God, I can't even hold on to this myself. But God, if you'll hold on to me. And through almost 40 years, I found him to be faithful. Even when Mark ain't faithful, I found him to be powerful. When Mark is weak, I found him to be my strength. When I need to be strengthened, I found him to be my hope. When I need my hope, hallelujah, do you hear me? I'm here to tell you tonight, make him your object of faith and hope. Amen. 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 You know him. Hallelujah. He'll make himself known to you. It's hard to put faith in something or in someone that you know little about. Hosea 4 and 6. The writer said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Amen. Think about that. We reject knowing who God is. Some people are satisfied with just coming to church. I'm going to preach to you tonight, church. Help me. Some people, hey, I know I'm preaching to the choir. Some people are just tickled to death just to come to church and sit here and just feel them Holy Ghost do dads. Yeah, feel it moving. Amen. Feel it moving. Running up and down your spine. Mm -hmm. I like them too. But I learned a long time ago if I want to walk in power and the victory, I've got to seek the one that's got the power and the victory. Right. And I've got to make him the object of my affections. Amen. Amen. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Notice what he said. Not the world. And not the world is destroyed. He said, my people. My own people that don't even know who I am. Oh. Woo-wee. My own people, he said, don't even know me. Hallelujah. They're destroyed. Amen. Why do you see people come into the house of God? Amen. And they'll stick around maybe for a little while. And then all of a sudden they're gone and you never see them no more. Why? It's because somewhere they lost their interest and they did not have a desire to know and to have the knowledge of God. They rejected knowledge. They rejected it. And they become illiterate. And I'll put it this way. They're illiterate Christians. Amen. I know that's down. Amen. But when God's people reject the light of the world, they can expect no less than a life that is filled with discouragement and defeat and confusion and anything else that will bring you down. Amen. I've seen people just like you have. Many of you know what I'm talking about. You've seen them too. And maybe you've got friends this way. And then they come to church for a while. And boy, they was on top of the world. And they was worshiping God. And they seemed to be happy. And boy, just life was being good to them. And for whatever reason, one thing or another, let them and draw them out of church. Amen. And they begin to lose the knowledge of God. They begin to lose that relationship with God and that closeness that they once had with God. And now their lives are filled with discouragement. And they're filled with defeat feet and they're filled with confusion. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm here to tell you, I know. I've snow people like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know anyone who wants to believe God and either now they've either lost their dedication to him or maybe they've left him altogether. Amen. They've left him altogether. Most likely those that have left him or they're not what they used to be with them. Their life is filled with discouragement and defeat and confusion. And Peter wrote this in verses 3 and 4 of 1 Peter 1. He said, he had begotten us into a lively hope. He gave us a new hope when he saved us. I said, he gave us a new hope. It's a lively hope. Amen. It's a lively hope. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, it ain't a dead hope. It's a lively hope. Almost 40 years ago, God gave me a lively hope. Amen. I once was dead in my sins and my iniquities and my transgressions. 
glory to God tonight. Hallelujah. He gave me a lively hope. Amen. And even so often, every now and then, these past uh, so many years, uh, that he has had to drop a lively hope. Uh, amen. When I look at something and things just don't seem right, and things just ain't uh, what they ought to be, and I'm going through some very difficult times, God gives us a lively hope. Amen. 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 Why? It's because we make him our object He's the of our faith person. and of our hope. Amen. Make him our name. Hallelujah. I'm going to read some scripture real quickly over in Jeremiah 17. I've read these so many times. Jeremiah 17, starting at verse number 5. Talking about faith and hope and trust. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, or maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like a heath in a desert, and shall not see when the good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. And he said, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. There's two kinds of trust spoken of by Jeremiah here. Two kinds of trust here. One is a defeated trust. The other one is a victorious trust. One is a cursed trust. The other is a trust with hope. He said, blessed, or excuse me, verse 5 said, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And maketh flesh his arm. In other words, his strength. Cursed is that man. This, in other words, is a false hope and hath no foundation in which to stand. Has no foundation. Again, I'm not saying we should not put trust in one another, but you've got to understand where God is coming from here at this point. Is that, folks, if you're going to make it through this world, don't hook into grandma's skirt tail. Hook into the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I thank God, like Paul said, I thank God that he always calls me to triumph. Amen. Thank God for these that have gone on before us. I've got an aunt that's gone on to be with, be with the Lord in heaven. But in her last days, and Jackie will tell you, she come down with Alzheimer's. Amen. And she buried one of her children. Amen. And they did because they didn't have the money to pay to, to pay for the burial and stuff. And we raked up and got what we could. This has been so many years ago. Amen. But she didn't even know who I was. And I lived with her, stayed with her a whole lot. But she remembered Jesus. They wouldn't allow me up there to preach, brother. Her name was Jessie. She said, she asked the, the funeral director, said, can he preach in five minutes? No. No. And that's fine. But she got up there and she was in a wheelchair. She rolled up there by her daughter that was laying there in the coffin. Tears are rolling. And buddy, she turned around and she preached one of the prettiest sermons anybody would ever want to hear. She said, you can stop him. But this is my daughter. This is my child. And she preached about Jesus Christ like you ain't never heard. What are you saying? Make an impact. He was the object of her faith. Amen. Her husband locked her in the outside toilet, 
nailed it shut so she couldn't go to church, but she made God the object of her affection. I don't know if you're getting this. Amen. That the faith and the hope uh, might be in God. And don't put it, man. Amen. If you got to put a little bit in it, that's fine. But don't put it in there because make God the one. Because you will build your, fo your, your hopes and your dreams. If you put it on man, you're building on a foundation that won't stand. It will fall. I have built my faith upon mankind in times past. And it almost cost me my walk with God. But I said, now, I, I will not do that. I love men, and I will honor people and give them the due. But I'm here to tell you, God had to teach me a valuable lesson. Get your eyes off a of man and put your eyes upon God. Make him the object of your affection. The first trust that Jeremiah spoke about was trust in man. It's a cursed trust. The second one is the one that you will bless you. And that's the trust in the Lord. Verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. This makes reference to that person who whose whole being is rooted and grounded in the Lord. We are every one of us meant to be strong with strength and can meet the most severest of tests when you put your hope and your trust and your faith in God. Some of you have faced some severe tests in your walk with God. Some of you have. And you've wondered, how have I done it? How can I make it? How did I make it? You know how you made it? God was the object of your faith and your hope. He's the one. He's the object of my faith and my hope. That lady, I stand sitting right over there. We go at each other. Y'all know that, but there's no harm meant done. You'll never hear me attack her character, and she'll never attack us. We just love to rib each other. Just the way we are. We grew up together as kids. We just never outgrowed it. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing. I got a lot of faith in that woman there, in all sincerity. Now, because she's my wife, I know her life. I know who she is. I know who she is. I go home with her every night or I come home to her every night and I know what she is. And I don't just say that to give her flowers, but I know who she is. And I love her. But as much as I love her and I honor her, he is the object of my faith and my hope. Amen. He is the object. Let me hurry. We are strong, or we are only as strong as our trust is in the Lord. By faith, we put our lives in the hands of God, our maker. And when we do that, we can do more than you ever thought possible. You can do all things through him, can't you? I don't know if you've ever done it, but I've had, oh, Lord, there's no way I can do this. God, you just, you can. And you know what? By God, through God, and with the help of God, we did it. Amen. Amen. Trusting God does not prevent times of trouble. No, you still have them. Trusting God don't, just because you're faithful doesn't mean you won't have struggles and you won't God, go through things. But it sure helps when hard times come, don't it? Yes. I said, it sure helps when hard times come. As I close, somebody won't get the music. <coughs> Jesus said this, that we cannot serve God in mammon. That's 
That's right. You'll hate the one and love the other. But we'll love the one and hate the other or cling to one and despise the other.